Conversations that happened before and, and even after the meetings. Um, so, yeah, welcome again. March's meeting. We have a great program. Uh, Bob's put together. We'll get started here shortly. Um, first of all, um, we have any guests? Okay. No guests. Well, we got a new member. <coughs> I'm, I, I guess, a guest. I'm joining again. I was a original member of the club when it started in 1988. And I forget all the ones that was involved at the time, but I was fairly active for all the years of 88 until probably five, six years ago. I, uh, I don't know, I got scared of the dark and I didn't want to drive home in the dark, so I quit coming. And, uh, it feels good to get back and see some of the faces I recognize, and uh, I hope to be around a while longer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Sure. Glad to have you, John. I'm glad to see you. Glad to be back, sir. The, uh, <laughs> the uh, if you haven't paid dues yet, um, you can mail those in or. Um, Tonight our treasurer is gone. He has COVID, um, so he's uh, doing well. But he didn't want to potentially, you know. Right. So um, if you have exact change, I can take it or a check. Uh, if not, you can always mail it or bring it next month. There you go. Thank you. The uh, a couple of things I want to show. Well, first, uh, at the end of the meeting. Uh, Norm has, he, he handed out tickets. If you didn't get one, get one from him. It's a free drawing. Uh, we can't do the 50-50s for a while because of um, the, the way the <coughs> Illinois law is and Sangamon County's ordinance is. But we can have a drawing to give away stuff, and if you would like to donate towards that, you're more than welcome to. So I can't ask for money. We can't ask for that. We can't do money back, but we can take donations if you'd like. Um, the uh, one of the things we've been working on is trying to get a logo for t-shirts, hats, polos, all of that. The uh, uh, Bob Booth has a niece that does, does um, graphic, kind of a graphic artist, and we said, "Hey, this is who we are. What can you come up with?" She came back with this. This is uh, and Frank. This is you had mentioned, I guess, some um, improvements. So this is getting. This is still a rough draft. This is. Um, based on feedback from board members that we talked about, and then Bob Booth went into a CNC software and kind of put those together, but his niece, who's the, the artist, will make it look, you know, kind of give it the polish. But we just wanted to see what everybody thought of that. Um, the, with the, the saw blade design with the capital. Or if anybody had any input to this. And one, one thing mentioned was, is because it's a circle, it could be made into a clock, which nobody wanted to do. Yeah. So, kind of, yeah, kind of funny. When he actually sent this to me when I was I was with my dad, and I showed him, I said, what do you think of that? And he says, oh, that's great. You know, you're going to have a lot of members with old saw blades. You just take and um, um, 
sandblast those and then have somebody etch this on the blade, throw a clock face in it, and you can sell those as well or use them as prizes or whatever. So uh, it, it has a lot of different potential for different things. I think it would go well on a hat or a, a shirt. So yeah, I'll give it to your wife. The saw blades? Yeah. To your wife? It's a joke. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so if there's no concerns with this, we'll go forward and have her, um, like I said, get, polish this up so it'll, it'll work a little better for the printers and the embroiderers and also for anybody who wants to use the file for uh, CNC or laser work as well. We'll share that, that vector file. So if you do CNC or, or work like that, we'll have to, you can have, use that, have that on the website. So, uh, But we, we want to polish it up a little bit. Do you want to do a survey to see whether it's t-shirts or regular shirts or caps or, or coasters or watch fobs? So um, our, the, the, printing, the way printing companies work nowadays, they can they basically can put it on their website and then allow our members to order from them instead of us getting into the, the t-shirt and hat business. You can tell them, what, hey, I want a polo, I want a hat, I want whatever. And then they will just, uh, you know, they'll have a cutoff date. And then once they have all the orders, then they'll make them. And then they'll call me to come pick them up and I'll bring them to a meeting. But that gets us out of the business of mm -hmm. trying to pull together custom orders and doing all this and, and trying to get money from everybody and uh, uh, inventory and all that crap. Exactly. So, and then a lot of times they'll do, uh, if you want to pay a little bit more, you can get one at any time as a one off as well. So. Uh how many here would be interested in buying a shirt? A shirt? Oh, a shirt. shirt. Yeah. Like a polo? Like a T-shirt. T-shirt or a polo, yeah. T-shirt or a polo. Yep. Right. So, but doing it this way, you can choose a polo, you can choose, choose, choose a T-shirt, you can choose a hat. Hats are embroidered, so they're not too cheap, but they do look nice when they get them done. So, um, Any idea on price? And Ralph needs to replace that hat of his. It's been around for a while. <laughs> not, not that one. Not that one. Your your wood your woodworking hat. Your your seat. Your your uh, capital area woodworking oh, hat. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I break that out when I have a wooden shop. <laughs> so um, I don't have the prices on me right now. Once we take the design to them, they'll give us prices, and I'll we'll send that out either in a newsletter or an email. Um, if I remember right, the hats were like twenty something dollars. Like I said, they weren't they weren't too cheap, but the the t-shirts were reasonable, and the polos were. Reasonable. Can the polos be embroidered also? They can be embroidered, and they would look a lot nicer embroidered. Yes, I agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You said the hat's embroidered, though. The, the hat is embroidered. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's going to yeah. cost you, but it's going to look nice. Though. Yeah, it'll look yeah. nice at the last. As opposed to a stencil. Or and, it'll, and you can clean it, too. So. But, all right, I just, like I said, I wanted to share that with you, trying to make progress with some of the stuff that we've talked about in the past. Um, the... There is one other thing that I've got, and it's just to show the classifieds. Oh, um, uh, John has brought in some, he's got some uh, printouts up here if you want to take a look at. He has extra copies if you want to take one with you. He has four different tools um, he's trying to sell. His, his contact information there is as well. Uh, radial arm saw, uh, the band saw, uh, joiner, and, and planer. And then uh, Lon has a bunch of things that he's listed on our website. A lot of new new stuff as well, and then um, uh, Bob Fox has a bunch of stuff on there, and then he sent me some more pictures that I'm going to add to it. Some other tools that he has for sale. So um, just keep checking that uh, that, and when I sit down, I'll I'll show you where that's at real quick before um, before Bob signs. Yep. And, and, and in addition to the uh, machines, I'm selling two of those which belong to a friend of mine from Pawnee, and he's got a. a quantity of uh, countertop slabs are 10 foot uh, tall by regular countertop size he's got 15 or 20 of those brand new but and he'd like to sell them uh, 25 dollars a piece or all the lot for 200 if anybody's interested in uh, slab countertops. They're nice. I needed one, but of course he didn't have the right color. <laughs> um, 
So real quick, when you're on the website up here at the top, you just go to classifieds and you'll see all that. I, I sent out a link, but uh, and of course, you want to do this. I looked at those today. I went to the website and it says you've got 115 members. Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I'll, I'll show this once I figure out why it's wanting me to log in. But um, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Bob. Okay. So did I have one of those lights on? We have about 32 pages. So tonight we get two presenters, myself and Dave. Dave will go first. And then once I'm done presenting, I'll go up to the announcements for the program today. So go ahead, Dave. So again, I wanted to welcome John again. As he said, he's an original member yes, hi. of the club. Um, the first meeting, that light's right now. The first meeting was back in December of '87, uh, by uh, in a cabinet shop of Jim Heller. I don't know if anybody knows that. I don't. I did not know Jim Heller then. Um, The, uh, the original meeting had Bernie Ryan, Pete Klein, and Harry Sturm. Of course, I remember Harry. Is, is yeah. Harry around with us today? No, Harry's uh, been gone for quite a number of time. Okay. Yeah, okay. and all those people are deceased. Okay. <coughs> to my I, knowledge. I assume. Um, they originally uh, called it the Central Illinois Woodworkers Guild. Um, they had a second meeting on January 2nd, 1988, and a, th and a third meeting on February 15th. So that's why John said, you know, the beginning of 1988 was the beginning of this club. So I've even got a newsletter in here that marks the 10th year anniversary of the club. And I've got a membership list and all that kind of stuff of all the people that was around back then. And that's about the time that I got involved. My son was born November of 88, and that's about the time that I joined the club. So I missed the first several months of the first meetings. But I, uh, but I've been in. Well, I've been in and out of the club too. So you know. Um, then it became Woodworkers of Central Illinois. Then eventually Capital Area Woodworkers. And uh, at the beginning of 1990, they had a newsletter called the Wood Shop Advisor, which it's still named today. And uh, uh, I wanted to pay tribute to Gene Shutt. He was a tour de force in this club way back when. He's also uh, not with us anymore, but uh, he did all the newsletters. <clears throat> he organized a lot of uh, trips, and I'm talking three night, two or three night trips of woodworkers and spouses going to like Jasper, Indiana, and um, you guys Kentucky, can remember some Bria, other places. Kentucky. Hmm? Bria. Yeah, yep. Kentucky. You know, you went to the, the Kimball uh, Piano Factory. You guys have been over to Arthur. Havana. Havana. Amana. Amana. Yes, yeah. yes. <clears throat> um, we used to have libraries back before the internet. We we were we, uh, even before VCRs. You know, we had just a library of books, and people could check out books. Uh, it was a great resource, you know, you, you could just take them for a month by writing your name down, you know, there was no fee or anything. Uh, then when VCRs, you know, were popular, um, we started collecting quite a bit of uh, uh, videos that I learned quite a bit from by, again, signing your name and taking that video home for a month and bring it back the next month, you know. Uh, uh, we had a lot of, we had a collection of monthly newsletters, we also had... Uh, what was that magazine? Shop Notes by Wood Magazine? And we had the whole smear, I mean, from the beginning to current. And you could check those out a lump at a time, you know. It was, uh, uh, but with the internet now, you know, all that stuff is kind of... Well, then we moved on to DVDs, and even those are all dispersed now, you know, because we, we have the internet, so... Um, We've been to a whole uh, number of restaurants <laughs> throughout the city. Um, remember the Fleetwood restaurant out there on? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a that was a, we were down there at the Illini. 
a hotel on South 6th Street for a while there too. So, uh, but it was, uh, it's been a great club and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it, so. Um, what I wanted to talk about tonight uh, which, is. Hey Dave, which files did you need? Is it the green wood one? C8. Um, Search for C. There it is. I don't even know what they are. I'm not even sure what they are. So, oh, and uh, another thing that we used to have back in the day, we would have tip of the month, and that'd get posted in the newsletter, and then we'd have jig of the month, and people would bring in their their little items, you know, the, whatever it is that they use to save time. Um, my, my jig of the month one year, everybody used to make fun of it. <laughs> um, but uh, I would, I would uh, have my sander and I'd wrap my cord around here, blah, blah, blah. And I got a little saw blade right here and I got a measurement where I would take a, well you get the idea, you know, you take a roll of sandpaper and you lay it in there and I got it all marked out and then you just rip it off the saw blade and then that would match your, your saw pad. And I used a piece of carpeting there so that when, while, the, while the machine was still running you could set it down and it wouldn't vibrate off the table while you're waiting for it to slow down. <laughs> But I just got my little toolbox here. I got my my round sticky pads for my uh, orbital sander and my square pads for my orbital sander. Mm -hmm. So that's that was my jig of the month that everybody got such a kick out of me making years ago. So for a long time, and I wish I could remember the club member's name. I wanted to find this out and I couldn't, but he had brought in an idea years ago of uh, creating these tongs. And if you can see, uh, there's a cut from here to here and here to here with a hinge. And then, well, again, because of the way, because of the way it's cut, it provides there's a tension for tongs. Well. This has been in my kitchen for 20 years. And um, when the toast is hot, out comes the toast. So, And uh, I've made uh, salad tongs. I've given these gifts. I've made these for wedding gifts. I've made these for just just whatever. And um, this has finally <laughs> broken over, all, over time. Um, and I thought, well, I, I want to make some more of these. How am I going to do it? Um, as you can see, this is, you know, like a quarter inch. Um, I would take uh, walnut and resaw it, <coughs> or at the time I think I had it resawn. I can't remember where I got that. No, I think I, 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 think I saw it, but um, I, uh, the, the, the St. Louis Woodworking Show down in Collinsville. Um, by the way, we used to have booths down there from time to time. We would have a, a space about from the wall to here. Guys would bring in their products, the things that they've made. We had a banner. I think that's at your house. And, um, uh, and we had a great time. And uh, we had a lot of people stop by. I mean, Collinsville is a ways away from here, but a lot of people from this area would go down to Collinsville for that show, recognize us as being from Springfield, and then, you know, we got members that way. Um, I don't know if the fairgrounds, if, you know, if the Illinois State Fair is another option to have a booth, and I don't know if you'd ever want to do that, because that could be expensive, but, um, but uh, years ago, uh, how many years ago, a long time ago, <laughs> I bought a nice band saw down there at the woodworking show. And uh, uh, does anybody remember Carter Products? Um, the blue 
blue stuff. Yeah. So at the time, I bought a bunch of bandsaw blades, uh, different sizes. I bought a half inch, which is what this is. Um, it's the it's the widest one that I have, and then my smallest is a, a eighth inch or three. Yeah, three. Yeah, eighth inch, and um, uh, and then I also bought. And if we can, is there any way to? Yeah. So yeah, um, at the at the same time, I bought. And it, uh, what do you call it? An, up, an upgrade for my bandsaw, and it's these guides here. Now a lot of people, some of their bandsaws, there's just little blocks that will hold the blade from moving left and right. Whereas these are bearings. Um, so you, so you got my half inch blade here. I'm, I'm blocking your way. I'm, uh, What's um, the brand of the saw? You know, and you know they're all different, but. Uh, when, when you're setting up your saw, of course, you want to have just a little bit of gap between the back of the blade and and the thing in the back there. <laughs> and then when you're when you're mounting your blade on your saw, the gullets you want to have the gullets right about at the front of that, whether it's the friction blocks if you use those, or the or the bearing uh, wheels. Um, that's uh, an important part of, of getting your. Uh, is another picture there? The right there. That, uh, <coughs> I can just look through them and you tell me to stop. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, there's there. yeah. Uh, look for the one with the bandsaw wheel. <coughs> That's underneath <laughs> the table. Keep going. That's my, that's a granite wheel on my table saw. I mean my <laughs> band saw. A granite wheel. It's it's granite, and so is the table. What kind of saw? What kind of band saw? It's a Steel City, 14 inch band saw, but it's got the extension on it, so I can cut up 12 inches. I can cut a 12 inch piece, and um, how long does that take to spin down? It takes a while. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of mass there. Like, uh, that came, Stu, that came like yeah. that with that granite on there. Oh, yes. That was a, oh, yes. Or was that a okay. okay. And that's the way I bought it. And it, it came with the extension already on it, too. Are there any? That's the one I want. You, I don't know if you can see this very well with the light, but I'll get back to this later. This is an important part of tuning your bandsaw. Now, how many, I wanted to ask here, first of all, how many people have a good bandsaw? Like, I don't know how well you can see that. How many people have a, a decent bandsaw? How many people are happy with the way it works? And how many people are doing any resawing? Still, okay. So, you know, um, someday we can, with more time, we can have a bigger discussion about this, but I wanted to resaw these pieces of walnut that I had to make these. And, I just, I, well, first of all, I couldn't get this half inch blade even on the wheel. It, it just it wasn't getting on the wheel, and I was getting frustrated. It's like, I don't understand. I've loosened. There, there was a picture back there where you saw the tension rod up at the top. I loosened that thing as much as it would go, and, um, <laughs> you know, I, I tried everything. I, and so finally, I called, I called the people that, uh, that sell these things. And uh, I talked to a guy over the phone, and he had the time just to talk with me while I was out in the garage on the phone. <clears throat> he said, have you tried hit, um, moving this wheel down? And it's like, well, it's, it's down as far as it's going to go. I've loosened as much as I can. He said, well, maybe take a mallet or something up here. And kinda, well, that's what I did. I kind of banged on it a little bit. I was gentle with it with a rubber mallet. And sure enough, it brought the wheel down because it was... The, the mechanism in here hold, held it tight, and it wouldn't it wouldn't slide down on its own. But after a few taps with a rubber mallet, that was the trick to get the bandsaw blade onto the wheel. 
Now, when I bought when I bought the uh, bandsaw, I, I I upgraded the the belts also. And according to uh, Alex Snodgrass, is anybody familiar with this guy? He's big into uh, bandsaws and, and and the Carter product line. Uh, uh, I learned a lot from him. Um, he also displayed. Had, has a big booth display thing surrounded by guys and speakers and everything showing off his uh, uh, his techniques down there. But again, I, I learned a lot from him. And um, um, I won't go into this too much because I think I get the feeling a lot of you know this already. But the wheel, be between, between the, you know, where the belt sits, I don't know, you know, uh, it, it's not flat. There's, there's a bit of a crown in there. Mm -hmm. And you want to get the belt to the front of the machine as, most, as best you can. Uh, um, and then, then you want to get where the gullet is on the blade in the center of that wheel so that it's riding on that crown, you know, on, that, on the top of that ridge. Because that way, the tension on the blade is greatest when the gullets are in the center of the wheel because of that, because of that crown. And if you, if, if you don't do that, you know, if, it, if it's forward or backward, that, that blade is going to want to waver on you. And I got some examples of waving in my <laughs> box over here I can show me later. Um, Get, get that right and get your tension right. And, and again, even, I, I'm not gonna go into how you tension your wheel and all that, but uh, get your gullets in the center of that wheel and get it straight. And where the blade lies on the bottom wheel, it's less important. Obviously, you don't want it sliding off left or right, but um, it doesn't matter so much the bottom, it's the top that's important. And then of course, that picture I showed you earlier with the guides, you know, bring the, bring the back guide up to the edge of the blade as best you can, and then just a little bit off the sides, top and bottom, and, and you're good to go. You know, that's, that's... What about when you have a wide, like a three quarter inch or an inch blade, can you still have it set in at the center with the gullet? Well, you pretty much have to. This is a half inch blade, and I'm not sure I can put a larger blade on my saw. I, I might be able to go to three quarters because the back of the blade is almost right up against that edge piece. You know, I have an inch quarter uh, inch carbide on mine, and uh, it, it would be off the back if it were if, if it were centered like you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you want that edge of that blade to go over that little lip there, you know, because yeah. the lip is what keeps it on there in the first place. But um, um, so I, I had a lot of trial and error um, with this. There, you might have saw some of the pictures that we were going through there. I, I won't go into a lot of that a lot, but I'm using my my square to try to line up the saw blade first of all. Uh, you know, once get the saw blade is the first thing. Then, then you want to square the table 90 degrees to the blade. And I had my saw all apart last week. Um, <coughs> had a mess, but uh, uh, I got it back together and uh, got it working. Uh, it, uh, but uh, just it, finding the right sequence of what to align with what next is, is, is the hard part. So I finally figured it out, but uh, um, I don't know uh, what else I can say about these. Oh, well, I can pass this around, certainly. You know. I just made that today. Um, I've gone through several iterations of that uh, because my wood kept breaking and I kept getting the wrong. You have more pictures? I don't know how much, they're not real easy to see, and I don't know how much time you want to spend on them. Um, um, 
I started off with this one. Um, I have uh, double-edged tape I put in here to hold these together. Uh, and I was cutting and sawing, and then I ended up <laughs> snapping off some of my some of my fingers there, so that, you know. What kind of wood? It's walnut. Mm -hmm. uh, so that got scrapped, so then I started working on this one. And I was sanding it uh, on my uh, oscillating sander, and I was pushing against it, and the sandpaper grabbed it and threw it and broke it. <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, oh, gosh dang it. <laughs> so I broke a little more, and then... <laughs> And then, uh, and then after I after I calmed down and I picked it up again, I I, uh, I just band sawed it some more and sanded it and and fixed it and corrected it. So, so. Uh, but, but this is my so this is the best I've got so far, and as you can see, it's not best. Um, there's some wavering in there, but I'll pass these around. You can tell how they fit if, in case somebody moves them around. Um, the knots will help you line them up again. Um, and in addition to the to that, but uh, that's the that's the best I've gotten so far with my resawing. Um, uh, are you familiar with the number of teeth per inch that you want to use? You know, on a, if, if you're working with very thin material, you want a higher tooth per inch count because you want more teeth, you know, within the boundaries of the wood, you know, to keep cutting. But then, like cutting that, I used a three tooth per inch blade with much bigger gullets, and it helps to clear the sawdust out, you know, and it doesn't clog as much, and it cuts cuts cleaner. It cuts slower, you know, with less teeth, obviously, you're cutting slower, um, but it'll cut smoother. You know. So, um, and then, uh, well, I could show you, this is even worse. Um, I'm just, these lines, they're just all over the place. Um, I won't even bother passing them. <laughs> um, but uh, I am happy with these blades, and, and this, again, that's the upgrade. And let's see. And the video. When you resaw on a bandsaw, I don't own one. I wish I did. Mm -hmm. But do you use a particular width, like a one inch blade versus a half inch? Or does it matter? Well, the, the more narrow the blade is, of course, the tighter of a turn you can make. If you've got a three, if you've got a one-eighth yeah. inch blade, which is really narrow, <laughs> very thin, yeah. um, you can make a three-sixteenths turn. Okay. With a half-inch blade, you can make like a two and five-eighths inch turn, but not really much tighter than that. Got it. You know, yeah. but for resawing, of course, you're not going like this. You you want as straight as you can be and as smooth as you can be. So hence the wider blade. Okay. Are you resawing against the fence? Yes. And that was another thing. I have <clears throat> I have on my saw a fence that's only this tall. But I'm trying to cut something that's this tall. So it's kind of wavering back and forth. So you can find all kinds of uh, you know homemade fences out there. Uh, Carter, Brother, uh, Carter Products, of course, they will sell you a very nice magnetic fence that's tall and it, it clamps to a metal uh, bandsaw table very sturdily and it, and it works great. It, I mean, it's a nice product, um, but it doesn't, it, it won't stick to granite, you know, so, so I have a new problem. <laughs> I had to, I had, so the fence that I got, it had some holes in it where I could mount another piece of plywood, a straight solid piece of plywood to it, and uh, I got a few pictures in there that if you want to look at them, but I, I just spent a lot of time lining up the, the, the table perpendicular to the saw, 
then making sure that my fence was also perpendicular, you know, equal with the blade, blade parallel with the blade. And, um, and it's, a, it's, it, it's, it's still a challenge. I'm still working on it. You know. But I want to I wanna get this, these tong things, you know, figured out. Um, uh, I was doing some computer uh, survey, uh, looking for some woodworking shops, and I ran across one. It's a pretty deluxe shop that gentleman had, and he was showing all his tools and so forth. He had three identical bandsaws. I thought, whoa, that guy, but it makes a lot of sense. You put a quarter inch blade on one and a half inch blade on another and an inch on the other. And if you're doing drafting jobs, it, you don't have to change the, it's a pain to change well, those blades all the time. Exactly, I ran into that with, with this, making this thing. I, I did my resawing. And and I and then I and then I then I used the resaw blade to cut. I used the resaw blade to cut this. And if you see if later on, I'll show you the difference between the kerf cut with the half inch saw blade. There, it's 0 .025 inches wide. The blade is, but the kerf. It makes the cut about twice that. So instead of a 32nd of an inch, the width of the blade, you end up getting a 16th of an inch cut. And that's what the kerf on that one is. What I wanted to do was take the resaw blade off, put the smaller blades on, my, my, my 3 sixteenths or my eighth inch, whatever, and, I was, and, then, and then cut something like this, where you don't see such a large gap as you do on that one. You got a blade with you? Yeah. Would you want to show the members how to hold it up? Thank you for reminding me. That's one of the things I was going to do. <laughs> it's a tricky. Yeah. It's tricky. Okay. So, how you get these uh, apart safely? I don't know. I just kind of throw it on the ground and there it goes. You know? Yeah, well, that's um, the best way to do it. <laughs> uh, if you watch Alex Snodgrass, you know. He'll do one of these things, and he'll just wrap it right up. Okay, not me. Um, I take my foot and turn it this way. That's what I did too. Yeah, I think now, that's. Easy. Now I recommend doing this with gloves. I think that. Yeah, <laughs> you want to wear gloves. Could you do it again, please? Huh? Could you do it again, please? Sure. I love throwing this thing around. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so what this guy told me, <coughs> or what, the way I learned it. Come forward a little bit. Okay. in the way. Okay. Slow motion, yeah. Twist that way, and then use your other hand, bring it a little further around. Get your foot out of there, you know, and then monkey with it. So so you. Two twists. Yeah, there's two twists. There's, there's, yeah, twists, three. Yeah. If you got a longer blade, sometimes you end up with four coils. There's a way, apparently, to get four coils in there. This is three. It's a 105 inch blade. So. Thank you. Anybody want to practice? And you had a. Yeah, I had a question for you. Since you're talking about man saws, uh, I understand that some of the newer man saws, on the tensioner, they have a lever that you can. Oh yeah. Move that takes the tension off, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if Carter makes that. Yes, they retro. do. Or not. But anyway, I'd like to know uh, any of you what your your experiences with them, and is it is it a worthwhile retro fit? It's for really good. Something? I have a new tabletop Rikon, and it has that little lever. It's just wonderful. You just take everything. the tension off. Yeah. You just remember to take it off right. when you shut it off. And you're ready to go. You put the tension on, and you, it's perfect. It's ready to go. Yeah. You take the tension off so it doesn't flatten your tires. Yeah. 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 It I takes tension off the blade. Tire. It just you know it's just cool. easier on the saw. I love it. Oh yeah. I uh, put my saw in storage for three years. I forgot to take the tension off the blade, and then I turned it on for the first time, and it snapped in about five seconds. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. It'll. Um, it'll 
Yeah, um, Tear your blade up too. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for the longevity of your blade and your machine and your belt. But the real deal is the fact that when you got to loosen that wheel, you want to bring it down just a little bit so you can get that blade off. Without that, and I'm going to call it a quick release. I don't know if that's what, but without that, you're up here turning this thing quite a ways. Some of them have ratchets. Mine does not, so you got to turn it and let go, or turn it and let go, and that's a lot of turning. Whereas that quick release makes it a lot faster. Carter's <coughs> version actually has two positions. It's like a slightly tensioned and then a full tension. So, <clears throat> whatever you. So Ralph, are we gonna get a demonstration with your blades in August? I'll bring one in. Roll it up. Anybody got any, uh, any more? I hope I helped somebody somewhere. <laughs> presentation was kind of prompted by uh, what we discussed about back in January. I know Ben brought in those amazing frames and he talked about some of the challenges you have with building frames whenever you use a miter saw. And you mentioned too, usually three of the miters are perfect. You get to the fourth one and it doesn't work out or else it's pretty loose and you struggle with it. And I thought about that. And one thing that came to mind is actually looking at using a, what they call a shooting board. And if you could put on the plans back there. Oh, yeah. uh, but I heard about this several years ago when Mark Adams I looked into it. And Lee, Lee Nielsen on the website has plans to make a shooting board. And what I did is I took those plans and linked it to our blogs on our website. And so, for those of you who don't have a cross-cut miter saw, this might be an option to get tighter miters with you, if you will. And this is what the Lee Nelson plans look like right here. It's You can actually make this probably in like two or three hours of a weekend. You're gonna use <coughs> MDF to build it. Uh, you have the option of having a right side and a left side with it. Um, on the, the bottom, there's a cleat so you can put it on your workbench, and as you're running a plane <laughs> down, it's not gonna fly off the table. So it's fairly easy to put together. Uh, what I like about the plans that they have with Lee Nelson is that they have a little attachment that you, you build yourself. This is for the miter. And then you can actually, with the cleat down here, you can square up wood with that, make it 90 degrees with it. And so, and what you do is, let's say you're, you want to tighten your miters, you put the miter piece back in, you take your piece of wood, hold it down with your left side, and then when you run the plane, you want to use a low angle plane on this. <coughs> use uh, your standard planes at 45 degrees because this really, for all intents and purposes, is ingrain, it's going to chew it up. And a low angle is not going to do that. You're going to get a lot better shavings off of that. And all you do is you just put on the wood on there on the edge and just run your low angle plane down there. And it'll, it'll get you know, a lot better, tighter joints with it then. So it, it's fairly easy to do. Do you clamp it? Uh, I clamp, I, I might clamp this down, but I don't really clamp the wood down. I've not had any issues with that at all. Because the force pretty much holds it in place. And then if you need to tighten up your miter, you know, a square joint, you just put it on this, just like that, and, and do the same process with it. And it'll tighten it up with it then. So it, it's fairly easy to use. Um, I think as you're building it, what I would recommend, I wouldn't use a standard square for this angle here between this cleat and this board here, because you're probably running the same issues you're having with the miter board, or with your miter saw. What I would encourage you is to get one of these devices here. This is a Wixie um, 
digital angle gauge, and that way then you're going to be dead on. Because I measured this when I actually used a, um, a woodpecker square, and it was off by two tenths of a degree. And you could see that when you actually you put it together. I would use one of these to set up this angle between the edge right here and this edge. It'll be, actually it's at nine degrees right now. And that way then you'll ha have a lot better miter joints with it then. So they'll be, they'll be fairly tight with it then. So, But it's not really that hard to build. Just a couple hours on a Saturday or Sunday and then you're ready to go. On the piece up closest to your stomach there, the one in the middle, mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Don't you need that taller to hold that square square right there? This piece right here? Yeah. No. Wouldn't that need to be taller? No. Now, if you have a bigger piece, let's say the piece is going to be on like this, then you're going to run into the plane here. Probably won't get all that. And so what I would, what you can do is actually get on the Internet and look at the what they call a miter jack setup. And so if you're going to have a wider piece where it's going to be more up and down like this, I would look at a miter jack with it as opposed to a, looking at a, a shooting board with it there. So, so the, the boards are what, three quarter inch thick? Yeah. The, the base board and the middle board? Correct, correct. This is um, a low angle plane, it's a Lee Nelson, and it's the model 162, and I think it's 250, something like that. What's the angle on that? 12.5 degrees, so it's a low angle. Or if you have a- Is that a door price too? <laughs> Man. But you can even use like a low angle uh, apron plane, one of those, if it works, it'll work on here. Um, I've had good luck with this. Uh, and I, I understand, you know, it, it can be a challenge. Um, I know at Mark Adams in the joinery class, they have where you actually take a piece of wood and looking at the end, it is perfectly square. So let's say it's two inches by two inches. You can actually put it on your, your miter saw, angle it 45 degrees, and you make two cuts. You use a stop with it. You make one cut like this. You make another cut with the stop. And then as you look at that, if you have the line going down the center to the point, then your miter saw is, is dead on with it. But that takes a little bit little bit more time to do that with it though. Yeah. But but I've I've been using this for a couple of years and I've had fairly good luck with it. So your your joints are a lot better. They're not perfect, but they're a lot better with it then. So that's an option. And then for you Bill, for the I think you're making a jewelry <coughs> box for your wife. Yeah, this probably w might not work, but I would look at a miter jack set up with it. That's, that's fairly easy to build too. I, I built one of those, it was like a couple hours on that. It wasn't too hard at all. There's a lot of good plans on the internet okay. on that. So, Thank you. yeah. But that, that's something to kind of keep in mind when you're, because I've had the same struggle too, Ben, with doing picture frames. And I end up falling back to this. Did you make a, like a plus two and a half setup too, or is it just two different angles? I mean, you can make that the same. I could, I, I did not. Yeah, yeah, I did not. So, yeah, I haven't had a need to do that, but that's a good idea to have that available to us with it then. So, um, did you find the blog yet? Or? Yes. Um, so on the, and I, I don't know what I did wrong before, but yeah, that classifies I was trying to show mm -hmm. is right there. So this is what I built it from, and they're they're fairly easy to follow with it. Well, it seemed like the most important part is the forty-five degree angle that you have. Correct. Yeah. On okay. that middle piece. Yeah. 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 That is that is the most important thing. You, you got to cut that 
dead on it at 45 with it. And I definitely, though, would, like I said, with this cleat right here and the side right here, I would make sure that's 90. Otherwise, you're going to have the same problems with it. And I also learned <coughs> that even though I used a, a table saw to cut both sides of this, this side is not the same distance. It's not truly parallel to this side. So kind of like a, a, a heads up that you'll get this side square, this one you can't. Because this, this part right here is not dead parallel with this side. So kind of a, a heads up on that. So any questions on that? So how did you get, on, a, on the piece that you've got there in your hand, how did you get that 45 degree angle absolutely perfect? You know, I actually used my miter saw. <laughs> and then I used, I, believe I, I think I used this to make sure it was, this was, it, this was 90. If this is 90, then it, it then shouldn't you've work. Got, you've got two 45 degrees. Correct. Yeah. I think that's what I did. I did this like five years ago. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's what I did to get that, that 45. Drill and those holes has got to be tough. You know, what you do is you, when you put this piece on, you don't have these wood dowels in it. Yeah, and you just... just you get it as tight as you can to this cleat, yeah. and then you just drill the holes. With a drill press? With, with a drill press. Yeah. And then you take the wood dowels, they're about an inch long, and you pound them in. And then, then you're set. And I would, what I did on the bottom of these, I coated them with wax, or paste wax. That, that way it'll come out a lot easier. But otherwise it's too tight, and these will be inclined to, to stay in those holes. Another item here. If you can go to the fine woodworking, um, Dustin. make keepsake boxes for my friends and family and uh, in fact our dentist retired and I made him one and I love to do it but obviously miters can be a challenge I like to use box joints on it but I like to use hinges that require a mortise in it and it's all fine and dandy but the biggest challenge can be is you have to get those hinges lined up when you do the mortise with the lid and the base. And for years I did it by hand. And I was always off a little bit. I would have marks on it, I would use an exacto blade, I, I tried everything. And I really struggled with it. And by chance, in February, in fine woodworking, and Dustin's gonna put the article up, they have an article on making a jig to put in hinges that require mortising. And I could not believe how simple it is. It, it literally blew me away how easy it is to do this. I'll pass the jig around. You know, it took me about an hour and a half to build this. And so I'm gonna try to go through the pictures if I could to kind of show you guys how you can make this. It's fairly simple. Get it down a little bit more. That's what it looks like right there. It's made out of half inch MDF. Um, usually, you have to kind of kind of gauge how big your box is going to be. And mine are anywhere from six inches to eight inches, and so that's how you're going to determine your length you're going to make of this piece. Okay. Next picture. And what you do is you're going to take your hinge. But I like to use the Brussels hinges, the JV102 hinges, and I'll pass those around. And you're going to take your table saw, and you're going to set up, you can see here, two stops. You know, you're going to take a, a 
or like a miter gauge and then use a spoil board on top of that. And then you're gonna have, you can see on each side, a stop block. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're, you're gonna do, by sight, you're gonna cut the left side first, then go over to the right, and then you're gonna cut the width of that hinge. And you push it in. You also have to worry about the height. And if you can go to the next slide, Dustin. So you're gonna test fit it, but what you're going to do is, when you, when you look at the jig over there, you're gonna plan for the bottom piece that holds it on, is it half an inch? Then you're gonna determine how much of that hinge you want inside the box. And so I think mine was like seven, eight, something like that with it. That's gonna determine how high you're gonna cut. If you can go back to uh, the table saw, that's how you can determine this height right here because you're gonna have that, the baseline is gonna hold it in place with it. And you're just going back and forth with it. And then when you get one side cut, you just turn it around, you have your stop blocks already set for the right width, and you just cut it because you know the height and then you know where the blocks need to go with it. So it's, it's fairly easy to do. So go down a little bit more. You're going to actually glue it together. And I, what I did with mine, I shot a couple pins in it and then I glued it. And it's, it was ready to go in about 20 minutes. You're using the dado blade and the saw or just? I just, I just use a regular blade. Single blade? It. Yeah. I, I, I could have used a dado blade, I should have. But I wanted to go slow with it because yeah. I didn't want to cut too far. So I, I did that, and then the uh, next, and then what you're going to do, you're going to put it on your piece, you're going to clamp it down, you're going to put it on the right side, and you can see the openings are right here, over there and over there. You're going to work on this side first, go ahead and show it. And you're going to use a palm rounder to cut it. And you're going to use a special bit, a, a special cutter from M MCLS. It's called a Dado Clear Out Cutter. And you're going to kind of gauge how thick the hinge <coughs> is. That's going to determine how deep you're going to go with this. And I'll pass this in there. Now you like the battery yeah. router. Mm -hmm. You like it? I do. I do. It's there's no cord in the way. Yeah, I, I you know? think. Yeah. And I get used to the battery. It's not really that bad. Yeah. With it. This is the wall. Yeah. The yeah. other yeah. the other nice thing is you turn it off and it stops. It stops very quickly. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, so you're gonna go in with the depth you want. You're gonna cut out. Yes, sir. Uh, I noticed you had brass hinges. Roughly, what's the cost? You know, those are those are the 102s. They're around 33, maybe 35. Fair. They had a sale um, a month or two ago, and I bought I think five or six of them, and it might have been 20 percent off. So I kind of load up. I use those hinges a lot um, on the keepsake models. So, so go down a little bit. Am I the box there? Yeah. There you go, sir. How do you how do you do that? I did that on the shape of origin. I put the S in with it. Was it what? The shape of origin. It's a handheld uh, computer guided router. Okay. And you can pick from their website letters. Okay. And you determine how big you want them. Yeah. With it. So obviously, because that, the bit's round, you're going to have some excess. And you leave it in place. You leave the uh, sure. jig in place. Right. And you go at it with the chisel. And you chisel out the excess. <coughs> and then you're set. Go ahead, Jason. Nice. Yeah. You're going to go to the other side. You're going to shift it over to the other side. You're going to do the same thing. And then your your mortises are all there. And I was shocked that the first time I used this, I didn't have to do anything else with it. I didn't have to do any more cutting or take a chisel to it. And it was, it was dead on with it. Okay. Next. What I, this kind of got my attention here too is they're showing the lid and one of the issues I've seen with making keepsake boxes is that 
Obviously, the box is all together. There's no lid, there's no base, they're all one piece. And it'd be nice if I had a bandsaw, I could cut it open on a bandsaw, be a cleaner cut. But with a table saw, what happens is when you put it back together after you cut it, there's some mix in there and they don't fit flush. And I looked at this and you can see he's had some burn and there's some issues where they don't line up. You want them perfectly flush so you have a tight fit. And what I do is I will, on my workbench, I will hold each piece down from the side, not from the top, but from the side. And I made this, this is made out of uh, four rolls or four pieces. It's um, adhesive back sandpaper that's in a roll. And you slap it on there, you put some weights on it, and I will have those things held down by clamps on the side. And I'll take this and I'll go over like this for about 10 minutes. And you do it for both the base and also the lid, and they're flush after doing that. Because when you try to cut with a table saw, I always get on the corner, I get like a little nick. And, it, and you don't, to sand with my hand, it's not going to be level, but something like this, it keeps it pretty well straight. And all you have to do is just vacuum this off every 20 minutes, and then you're ready to go. And they're just showing that they're doing the other side with it. So it's, it's a fairly easy, easy process. The only thing is, if you go to a different type of hinge, different manufacturer, different size, you got to make a jig for that manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So, but this is, I, I was really shocked how quick I actually made that, that keepsake box for putting on, on the hinges. And I, had, I didn't have to go back and do any cutting at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. I use uh, uh, flocking. On that. flocking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's really easy to put in. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think there might be one more picture. I don't know. That's where do you get the sticky back sandpaper? The big white. It's either Woodpecker has it or Rocco has it. And I went with a one uh, one twenty grit. I saw uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. So. So mm -hmm. then it, but it, it's really it's it's. A, so simple, it just blew me away how easy it was to work with it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. That's it, that's it right yeah. there. Very interesting. So, any questions on this at all? Okay, I've got one comment, Bob. Yeah. When you're looking for that router bit, don't be deceived because it looks like that you can go to Menards and buy one. Yeah. But there's a slight offset. The, the bearing is just a little, yeah. which way is it? It's just a little bigger. So mm -hmm. that it does not give you that size. There's none of right. the big box stores that actually carry those, right. but you can get them from a few different yeah. other manufacturers. Yeah, and you have to make sure it's that router bit. Right. Because you want that bushing on top, not below. Right. Below, it's not going to work with that jig. It has to be on top for it. Okay. Any questions at all? Okay. And then announcements. Um, the meeting next month, we're going to have the type bomb uh, present at the meeting. He's a chemist, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to present next April. And then we have five open shops so far this year. Um, there's going to be one August the 5th. Ralph Lynch has volunteered to show us how he's going to cut lumber. And if you can go to the calendar, and we're going to show you guys how you can register for this. <coughs> I'm just skipping through the months to get to August. Yeah. But if you click on the fifth here, you'll see where it says open shop at Ralph's. And over here, it'll, it'll open up all the um, details of that open shop. And the register is just so how we know how many people are going to show up. So uh, Ralph knows how many mouse to feed. <laughs> we want to try to have a swap meet too. You got to yeah. have. Button, you hit that and it just says, Are you coming? Yes or no? And mm -hmm. 
And I'll send out an email to everybody that way they're aware of it too. Um, May 20th, Bob Booth is going to show his CNC <coughs> machine. We don't have the times right now. And then we have three more that people have committed. We, we have to get the dates from them and the times from them. So five open shops so far. And then I'm going to have the presenter schedule hopefully finished by, by the end of this month. And I'll get that out. And I, I think, Bill, you had some questions to on um, the miters. Or I, I was just asking these guys. It's a plain old miter corner, and I'm trying to make it really good. So it's just taking some work, and I was asking a few questions on them, trying to get it right. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I wanted to mention when uh, uh, Bob Mankey from Type Bomb, when he comes back, uh, if you were here for last for last year's. This year's is completely different. He has two different, unique presentations he gives. So um, you're not gonna, if you were here last year, you're not going to miss this year. It's going to be different. So. Yeah. I noticed on the website you need a club <coughs> password to access okay. all the information. So some of it, and you have a link in your email. Okay. I just sent it to you. Okay. Why do we need a password? Well, the, the password's only for um, accessing member data. So if, uh, if you want to get to, okay. uh, if you get phone numbers and email addresses, we didn't want that just open. But everything else. Uh, I was, um, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. So when you're on the. Yeah, everything else will open up. The only thing that is going to block you is if you go to this members tab, it'll ask for your password just just so we're not giving everybody's phone number to anybody who clicks on that. I noticed also you list the meaning times, the dates and the times, but no location. I just, just so happened that I, I knew you always come to MCL no, thank cafeteria, you. but I just assumed you still did, and I hit the jackpot. <laughs> yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I didn't notice that it. Go in there and look, and you see the dates and we, times, we, but no location. Thank you. I, I didn't notice that. Here's an older entry, and this is what they should have looked like, so I'll go in and make sure that they all get updated. Okay. So thank you. I, one other, one other quick thing at the bottom of each page in the lower right corner there's a Facebook link and a YouTube link and it's not really obvious what those are for but at least it wasn't for me but if you click on the YouTube link that's where it goes thank you um, I had somebody give me a question about the S I actually use the shape of origin to put the S in there and also do the box joining on it. And shape of origin recently added their own design program called Studio. And you can go in there and find artwork of all kinds. You can find letters. You size it to whatever you want. And then you can actually cut out the S and then you go to your piece and you cut in the spot for the S and it fits. And then they've always had a program in there to do box joints with it. It's fairly simple. And they've added now a new device called a plate, and it actually allows you to work on smaller pieces with it. They've added a library of all of the commonly used hinges and latches, all that stuff. You can actually download it onto the Shape of Origin and then place it on your piece with it. Now, I've not done that yet. I'd like to try it, but that's another option out there, too. While we're asking, Questions about website. Yeah, today's, I, I read the uh, the newsletter today, and at the bottom of page four in the right hand corner, there's a picture and it says tip of the month, mm -hmm. and it looked like there was an Irwin squeeze uh, clamp and the and the two pieces of wood with circles on them and a square laying across the top of it. I was just trying. 
Yeah, but there was no oh, scripts. No, it was no. I, I, what was the tip? When I when I did that, I just thought it would be self-explanatory. Where you know, you, you take a, a, a square piece of wood and, and drill a circle in the center of it, and then and then cut the two forty fives into that square. Sure. Towards the circle. Sure. And then the you know the triangle piece is going to fit inside your miter, uh, inside your frame that you're putting together, and then. You know, and then the remainder holds the outer pieces of the frame. And then that clank you saw on there, it, you just squeeze those It's a gluing joint. You know, it it gluing brings those two pieces together. I mean, um, gotcha. what did you do to jig, make huh? the 45 cut? You know, uh, the circular saw. Whatever saw works. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, um, yeah, it wasn't, it, there wasn't much to it. I, that was kind of a last minute. Uh, I, Thing I, threw in there. I was just curious what it was. Yeah. I, I need I need explanation. I'm not self-explanatory, really. I say? didn't volunteer to have an open shop on the application, but my shop is pretty small. If I build a birdhouse in it, I got to take it outside to build a second one. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I'm what happened to the to your shop shop? Did you downsize? No, I've got the same size. Then you're full of shit, <laughs> but <laughs> what I, what I want to say, I uh, don't want to have an open shop, but you're always welcome. One, two, three guys, give me a call and come out some Saturday, and I'll show you the unique things I got in my shop. You're bragging. I can get one extra person besides myself in my shop now. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that nothing else? <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, I took some of those pictures. I, like, upside down and backwards for some of them. I so. learned it, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. For the, um, Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Real quick, Norm's got our tickets real quick. And uh, before I forget, don't forget to leave a tip for the waitress. Oh, yeah. <coughs> uh, you don't want to take all night doing this. There's six prizes, uh, two foot level, a mallet made out of uh, honey locust, a uh, doorstop, a scraper, um, drill bit attachments, specialty for uh, electrical stuff. Um, hand me your saucer, will you? Saucer. This is a pack of extra big rubber bands. They make real good uh, light duty clamps. I was afraid I would draw and draw my own number, but. Uh, last two numbers. It was one off, so whoever is 618, last three numbers. Okay. Go ahead. I'll take the mallet. The mallet? Mallet. 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 Which one do you want? The mallet. <laughs> Eight. Yeah, that one. I have Bill Walton to draw the next one. Who made it? Did you make this for him? No. Okay. Um, the next number is 611. Who has 611? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'll have the rubber band. I was going to say that. I'll make a rubber right. gun. Draw the next one. <laughs> All right. The next number is 610. Hey, we're pulling them out in sequential order. Oh, wow. Yes. All right. Very good. Good job. What is this? Mm -hmm. All right. For drill bits. Uh, okay. Special. Sounds good. I'll take that. Thank you. All right.
right, here's our next number. 617. Okay. Every day. 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 Now, now the big question is, who wants to donate prizes for next month? <laughs> Don't be bashful, hold up your hand. Okay, meet with me, I'll make something and you uh, contribute something and we'll keep this going. All right. Thank you, Norm. Uh, anybody have anything else before we adjourn? Um, one question. It, uh, Dave mentioned it. The uh, St. Louis Club down there, their annual show at uh, in, in, uh, Collinsville, right? Is there any word? Is that going to come back next year? Is it dead? Did it get rescheduled? If it did, I wasn't aware of it. Last time I looked, it was on there. I meant to look at that. I I I'd, love, I'd love to go down there. Yeah. Uh, even if you know, I'll schedule a whole day to work with you yeah, if yeah, we can yeah. find out for sure. I thought it was a marvelous show, uh, and I, I'd like to make sure if we can, if, if it's going to be there, I can get a couple of really not want to miss it. So this says they're going to bring it back in 2024, um, and I and I'll email them again because I was emailing back and forth to get us set up. So anybody that doesn't know, they, if you have a club, they give you um, a, a whole table this long for free. And if you set something up for kids to do something, they'll give you, I think, two more tables. So they'll give you more, you know, thousands of dollars worth of booth space for your for your club uh, for free for showing up and, man and, and getting somebody there uh, at your table the whole time. So... It is something we can do uh, if we have enough volunteers that want to go down there over the three days to, to man that booth. Um, and it's a great exposure because one thing I noticed when I was down there, the, the last one we had, I, uh, I did seminars the whole uh, three days. And I, I did paid seminars the whole time and got to, I learned a lot. Uh, but I met a lot of people from the Springfield area that didn't even know we existed. So uh, it's surprising how many people from here go down there and, and they've never heard of us. So. Um, yeah, we'll, if it's, I'll look more into it. Maybe there's something they've really saw on the website yet, but they are saying 2024 they're coming back. So. All right, anything else? All right, thank you for coming, and uh, it's probably too late for this year. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Robert. At our age, it's good to see you, too. Yeah. Well, you, I know you're in church, but I don't see you up at I have to to her upstairs. Well, I did it. I